Welcome to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. First of all, happy... Let me start by saying happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Yeah. I'm yeah. going to spend tonight with those I love the most, my audience. <laughs> Tonight's the night. <laughs> Relationship's getting pretty serious, is what I'm saying. <laughs> also, uh, tomorrow is the deadline for a budget deal in Congress. So what happened was a, a bipartisan group of lawmakers uh, today delivered their border compromise plan to the president. Now, there was some question whether he'd actually sign it, because the deal offered Trump less than a quarter of the $5.7 billion he wanted for barriers along the U.S.-Mexico border. He does get 55 miles of fencing along the border, but not walls based on new steel or concrete prototypes Mr. Trump has promoted. Wow. That's a... That's a serious walk back. Uh, <laughs> honey, I know you wanted a diamond engagement ring, but what about this candy necklace that says hot and horny? Uh-huh. You can, you can eat it. Oh, nah. Very nice, sir. Yeah? Very nice. Now, we recorded this earlier. This is earlier, right? This isn't later? This is earlier. Yeah. We recorded this earlier, but I assume he signed it, even though he claims he could get all the funny he wants for his wall if he just declared a national emergency. That, of course, would be insane. Mm -hmm. It would be usurping Congress's power. There would be immediate court challenges. Many in his own party have said it would set a terrible precedent of unconstitutional overreach by the executive branch. So I seriously, de I'm sorry, Mitch McConnell? I've just had an opportunity to speak with President Trump, and he, I would say to all my colleagues, has indicated he's prepared to sign the bill. He will also be issuing a national emergency declaration at the same time. And you can tell by the tone of my voice and <laughs> the urgency with which I'm informing you that this is a true national emergency. <laughs> In a related matter, I see that the Senate chamber is on fire and filled with scorpions. Everybody, everybody run. Run for your lives. Now. <laughs> Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi was none too pleased. And she had a warning for the future. I know the Republicans have some unease about it, no matter what they say, uh, because if the president can declare an emergency on something that he has created as an emergency, an, an, an illusion that he wants to convey, just think of what a president with different values can present to the American people. Or a president with any values. I think about that all the time. Again, oh. <laughs> Again, we recorded this earlier. But if he does declare a national emergency to get his wall, where's the money going to come from? Well, sources say he's going to take it from disaster relief funds intended for California and Puerto Rico. I mean, no, no, you boo all you want, but really. <laughs> really, folks, what's the difference? Fires, hurricane, my administration, they're all disasters. They're just... <laughs> Seek higher ground. Seek higher, seek higher ground. Trump's childish reaction shouldn't come as a complete surprise because he warned us yesterday that no matter what Congress said, his wall was getting built. The wall is very, very uh, on its way. It's happening as we speak. And it's a big wall. It's a strong wall. It's a wall that people aren't going through very easy. They're going to have to be in extremely good shape to get over this one. <laughs> they would be able to climb Mount Everest a lot easier. I don't know what the... Whoa. Mount Everest? What the hell is he talking about? Wow. Is he going to build the wall straight up? I don't... <laughs> You're going to need oxygen. You're going to need oxygen. There's, there's more disturbing news about Trump and Russia. This time, it comes from former FBI acting director and courageous upper lip donor... <laughs> ...Andrew McCabe.
FBI. Freeze. FBI. I'll take that back, thank you. He's going to be interviewed this Sunday by our friend Scott Pelley on the 60 Minutes. Uh, but they released an advanced clip, and McCabe says that right after James Comey was fired, and, and McCabe became acting director, his number one mission was protecting the Russia investigation from the president. I was very concerned that I was able to put the Russia case on absolutely solid ground in an indelible fashion, that were I removed quickly or reassigned or fired, that the case could not be closed or uh, vanish in the night without a trace. Good, and you know, that, that's, that's important because Trump is good at making things vanish, okay? His casinos, uh, his airline, he has not seen his feet in years. According, according, do is we do clean up that top a little bit, that would be great. Tell him. Now, according to McCabe, after Comey was fired and people in the media complained, Trump called him to try to change the narrative. And he did it on a phone that was not secure, saying, people are really happy about the fact that the director's gone, and it's just remarkable what people are saying. Have you seen that? Are you seeing that too? <laughs> Evidently, the phone line wasn't the only thing that was insecure. <laughs> a lot of people, no, I tell you, a lot. Hello? Hi. Hello. Hello, Andrew. Yeah, a lot of people are saying this is not obstruction of justice. Are you hearing that too? Because I'm, I'm seeing a list of people I'm going to fire as acting directors of the FBI. There's only one name. Are you seeing this list too? Now, if you recall, Comey found out he was fired while on official business in California, and McCabe says that on that phone call, Trump began to talk about how upset he was that Comey had flown home on his government plane. Firing was too good for that SOB. I wanted him to suffer the deepest shame possible. Delta coach. <laughs> okay? <laughs> McCabe's account also includes details about his former boss, deputy attorney general, and lab partner with a secret crush on you. <laughs> Rod Rosenstein. <laughs> Apparently, Rosenstein was shocked that the White House was making a look as if Comey's firing had been his idea, saying, there's no one I can talk to about this. There's no one here that I can trust. Yep. Pretty soon, that's what's gonna go on the dollar bill. <laughs> trust no one. <laughs> now, now, uh, the, the Department of Justice denies McCabe's claims. And so does the president, who tweeted, Disgraced FBI acting director Andrew McCabe pretends to be a poor little angel when, in fact, he was a big part of the crooked Hillary scandal and the Russian hoax a puppet for leaking James Comey. What the hell? He's back to crooked Hillary and Russia hoax? Oh, wait. Oh, no. Did someone reset Donald Trump to factory settings? 